The WebEx is now live. The, the March, the Tuesday, March 16, 2021, 6 p.m. special meeting of the Common County Board of Education meeting is called to order. Welcome and good evening to everyone. Pete, would you please, oh, the purpose of this meeting is to review and consider a return to in-person learning for pre-K through 12th grade students. Pete, please call for the um, roll. Okay, Ms. Chisholm. Present. Um we have you, Mr. West. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Mr. McKellar. Yes. Ms. Musgrave. Yes. Ms. Sutton. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Mr. Warfel. Present. And Ms. Wiggins. Present. Okay, Ms. Jones, that's everybody. Thank you. Now the chair will consider a motion in, in 1.02. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion pursuant to Board Policy Codes 2300 and 2450, effective for this meeting only, to waive any requirements that board members participate in the meeting in person and to ratify and formally adopt the virtual meeting format described in the meeting notice. Second. The, um, the motion has been made and properly second. Is there any discussion on that motion? If not, Pete, would you please call for the vote? Yes, ma'am. You can use your clicker, and I'll call for Ms. Sutton. Yes. And Ms. Musgrave. I had to punch mine twice. So. Ms. Musgrave. Yes. Okay, yes. Thank That's you. Ms. Chisholm, that's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> the chair will call for a motion for adoption of the agenda. Ms. Um, Madam Chair, I will move to adopt the agenda. The motion has been made and properly second. Is there any discussion? If not, please take the vote. Okay, and y'all can use your clicker, Ms. Um, Sutton. Yes, Ms. Sutton. I'm sorry, yes. Yes. Okay, and Ms. Musgrave. Yes. Okay, Ms. Chisholm, that's unanimous. Thank you. We will now move to 3.01. Consider approval of the pre-K through fifth grade students return to plan eight. Dr. Conley will begin his presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. As we prepare to set plans to transition to plan A, I'm grateful for the time and effort that has been spent making students return a safety a safe and healthy one. This week, we had a smooth transition to plan B. On yesterday, 11,952, 58 students signed in in person. On uh, the blended option, 29,000 192 students opted for the blended option, which means there will be 14,217 students on cohort A and 13,429 students on cohort B. 19,547 students have chosen the remote option. There were 440 buses on the road yesterday and today and will be running each day. We projected to transport 12,761 students in cohort A and B combined. We have been following the science <clears throat> throughout this pandemic. Today, the positivity rate is 6.4. Our goal was to be below 7%. We have followed the guidance of the federal, state, and local health officials with safety, men are up our true north asthma 
and remain our focus and top priority. At this point, the lesson risk of the spread of the virus ensues and the high number of staff that have been vaccinated helps us examine the reality that the social emotional harm to the students in the learning remotely now outweighs the potential low risk of COVID spread in schools. Senate Bill 2220 requires all public elementary schools to move to Plan A. Under the new bill, all schools must offer in-person education options for students. Elementary schools will now operate under Plan A. Under Plan A, students and teachers in Tumblr County schools will participate in a face-to-face -face environment. All public health requirements in the strong schools public health toolkit except the six feet social distancing requirements will be followed. Families that prefer not to return to in-person instruction can remain virtual. The full-time virtual learning option will be exactly as it has been in Plan B for families. Next slide. For pre-K through fifth graders, in compliance with Senate Bill 220, all pre-K to fifth grade students will attend to Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday face-to-face -face, beginning April 12th if that's the option that parents chose for them. Wellness Wednesdays remain. No live instruction, but asynchronous learning will continue for all. Again, a virtual option will remain available for families that wish to remain virtual. Wellness Wednesdays will be used for deep cleaning, flexible time for classified staff that support training and bus safety on the four days students attend school in person. It will provide schools with the flexibility to utilize classified staff for activities that support training and bus safety on the four days. Principals have expressed concerns about the volume and time required for screening along with ensuring health and safety protocols. Families that wish to remain virtual again have that option. Humble Academy students will experience no changes. Year-round schools would also begin on April 12th following intersection. Overview of Plan A. Plan A does not require schools to reduce the usual number of students in the classroom. It does not require social distancing on school buses. We will continue daily symptom and temperature screenings for all students, staff, and any persons that enter the building. Social distancing will be required of anyone in the building. We will continue to limit visitors in school buildings under Plan A. All students and staff must wear a face covering in school and on buses. We'll continue to provide 
PPE, face coverings for students, staff, and teachers. Calendar adjustment. March 31st remains an asynchronous learning day for all students. Staff will report on site to assist with plan A preparation. April 1st will be revised to be an asynchronous learning day for students and a required work day for staff. No calendar adjustments for year round. Since the next day back in school after April 1st will be the beginning of K-12 Plan A on April 12th, we believe it's necessary from a student health and safety standpoint to have all staff in the building make the final preparation for the transition from Plan A to Plan B. For example, final prep, checks for hygiene, child nutrition, safety precautions, main social distancing to the extent possible with larger numbers, even though six feet will not be required, and been prepared for larger number of children who will need to be trained. Here's the timeline. As we work to meet the time requirement of session law 2021-4 and transition to plan A from pre-K to fifth grade, time is of the essence. In the board approval, we will communicate to families this evening regarding students in grades pre-K to five transition to plan A following spring break. As part of our communications, we will invite families to complete a commitment form, allowing them to affirm their child's learning option through the rest of the school year and their bus transportation needs. Students who are currently taking part in blended learning, plan B, will automatically be enrolled in plan A. However, families have the option to switch to full-time virtual learning. Students enrolled in the virtual academies are not eligible to transfer to another district. They will remain at the virtual academy through May 2021. This is important for our families. Commitment forms will be due back to the school on Monday, March 27th at 5 p.m. And those learning selections will remain in place through May 2021. This allows us time to process transportation requests and prepare for a smooth transition to Plan A beginning April 12th, pending board approval. At this point, I'll pause and happy to answer any questions from the board beyond our proposed plan for a smooth transition to Plan A for students in grades pre-K through five. Okay, we've heard the presentation by the uh, superintendent. The chair will entertain a motion. Then we'll have discussion. Do I make a motion uh, to uh, accept the superintendent's recommendation for pre-K through fifth grade return to plan A as presented? Second. It's been moved and properly second that we accept the superintendent's uh, agenda as he has just presented. Uh, we will now have discussion. He will you call the roll, and each person will have a, a chance to give their comments or concerns, and then we will take the vote. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to start, or do you want me to come to you last? You can come to me last. Okay. Thank you. Mr. West. Um, 
I support the, uh, I appreciate all the thought that's going into this, and I support the superintendent's recommendation as presented. Ms. Jones? Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, since uh, students started already, have uh, masks been given out already? Because it was earlier discussed months ago that they would be given five masks apiece. Yes, the masks have been delivered to the school, and uh, I don't know if it's still or not, but um, they have been provided to the school. Okay, um, and this is about buses. Um, I know it was discussed again months ago that there wasn't enough employees to have one adult in addition to the bus driver on the buses. Is that still the case? Yes, ma'am, that's still the case, but we did away with the requirement to screen children at the bus. So they no longer have to do that. And in plan A, they would not have to be social distance on the bus. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Mr. McKellar. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, Dr. Brown, I have a couple of questions. Uh, my first question is, uh, if there was a possibility to begin in-school learning starting on March the 21st with, for K through five, would the buildings and everything be prepared and ready to accept students? Buildings are operational now uh, and prepared for learning. Learning has already been done in person. So what date it start has no, it's immaterial for um, learning. Buildings are ready, yes sir. Okay, well, the reason I ask that is, uh, my suggestion is that we consider uh, I'm going to kind of amend your, your recommendation uh, that we consider possibly starting K through 5 on March 21st. That would be mid 27th. 21st is Sunday. Um, oh, March the 22nd. Then, right. I'm sorry. March 22nd. Uh, and that and uh, through Mr. April McKellar. the 2nd. That would be two weeks. Okay. Ms. McKell, yeah. excuse me, please. But the motion is on accepting his proposal as is presented. Well. And we're just doing okay. discussion. Okay, well, uh, I have no questions then if you, if that's the limitation. Yeah, yes, that is. Okay, Ms. Musgrave. Um. I, if that is uh, the limitation that we accept the um, motion as it is, then of, of course I have no questions. See that I think it was a real fast motion uh, that we could have the discussion before the motion, but I accept the uh, motion as it is since that's the rule. Okay, Ms. Sutton. Uh, yeah, Dr. Conley, can you just clarify, because I've had people asking me about this in-person learning um, from the governor. A lot of people is not clear. He said some form of in-person learning, and I've had some principals prefer the, the um, plan B that we're in now. They say it's more comfortable to them. So can you explain that if it's the law, we have no other choice, this is a mandate, because the public's just not clear on that. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Sorkin had to pull it up, but I'm going to ask him to respond. But Plan B would not meet the intent of the legislature. Mr. Sorkin. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Sutton, to your question for grades K through 5, the legislation requires a return to in-person instruction and Section 5 of the Act defines that in-person instruction is um, the students being taught in person by a teacher of record on a local school campus, um, being provided with child nutrition service, and normal um, school system transportation services. And in the governor's presentation... Are we not doing that now in Plan B? 
We are in the government's presentation and the uh, state board chair, they made it clear. They said five days a week in their presentation, but it was later clarified that that should be four days with a wellness day. But they didn't give us the option of less than four days in person. And the, the in-person instruction that's required under the law now for grades K through five, um, that dispenses with the, uh, the six feet of separation social distancing requirement that was part of plan B. Um, so the, the idea is that social distancing will be um, applied as possible but that there's no limit on the number of students that can be in the classrooms because there's no requirement of the six feet of separation. That, that's not really answering the question that uh, I've been getting. The, the, the public understood that the governor was asking each district to have some form of in-person learning. And we, we're doing that. We're doing that now. We came back on the 15th yesterday with that. So, and, and the principal that has called me, one of the things they asked me was to make sure that I kept them safe if they could be. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do, as well as the teachers. And the people are feeling more comfortable under plan B. I'm not understanding why, why some people are some interpretation of what the governor says is a must that we be an A if we can do in-person learning under B as we already are. There may be some misunderstanding regarding the, the call that the governor made on a voluntary basis for students to return to in-person instruction. I believe that was back in February, but what we're working from now is the legislation the actual law that the governor signed that became a uh, statute last week. And, and that has the requirement of the instruction. Option a? Is it a must that we do option A? I just, I just want to be clear and tell people the right answer. I don't want misinformation going out and people saying stuff that's not true. So are we mandated right now for option A, or is the instance of learning that we already have, it, 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 does that qualify to what we can Ms. Sutton, to, to respond directly to your question, I'm reading from Section 2 of Senate Bill 220, Session Law 2021-4, and for grades kindergarten through five, which is the the frame covered by the, the pending motion, it states, and I'm quoting now, local boards of education shall provide in-person instruction under plan A, parentheses, minimal social distancing, close paren, to all students enrolled in grades kindergarten through five. Okay, so if it's a mandate that we have to do it, we have no other choice. So I support Dr. Connie's recommendations for the um, April 1st for option A. Okay, Ms. Dan. Okay, I want to just like Greg, thank everybody that worked on this. This has just been um, a daunting task for everyone. Um, I totally agree with it. I want one um, clarification, and I probably could ask this later, but somebody else may wonder as well or will be asked this. Um, in the recommendation, it says that a virtual option will remain available for families that wish to remain available, uh, main virtual. They won't be going to the virtual academy though. They will remain 100% virtual um, through their schools. And what will that look like? Right, this question. So you have two types of virtual. They have those that opted for the virtual academy, mm -hmm. and their parents that opted for virtual learning from their base school. And so some schools have the capacity to have in-person teachers 
and separate runs from teachers. Mm -hmm. Others that don't have that staffing capacity, the teacher will be teaching like this, virtual, mm -hmm. persons who are online, uh, like the board members this evening, and then those who are in the room at the same time. But does that mean that the teacher has to stand in one place the whole day? Well, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm most, just curious. Part, I'm not there. But uh, the camera might be able to pick up the whole room. But the ones I have observed this week, they were able to move around some in the classroom. Okay. Okay. All right. Especially those that had a big monitor up in the room. Right. Okay. Well, as I, I just, that was clarification, but yes, I am mm -hmm. um, uh, behind this. Okay, Mr. Uh, Dr. Conley, I just noticed in your presentation that um, on March 31st, that there were expected to be some preparations still needing to be made by, by staff. But what sort of preparations? would they need to make that they haven't already made at that point? Right. So uh, on March 31st, um, the classrooms have to be moved from cohort set up to all of them being in the room at the same time. All right? And so there won't be A, A, B, B, but be one cohort over plan A. So we need to move that probably to around in the building. Um, you know, cafeterias for those that be using the cafeteria, uh, some of those uh, building adjustments. Thank you. Uh-huh. And I just want to say that uh, until this morning, I was a little bit on the fence about whether I was going to support this, this part of what we're considering this evening. But uh, after speaking with Dr. Conley and, and members of his cabinet about some of the reasoning behind the delay until after spring break. I, I, I feel like uh, that I, I understand that and uh, I would be in support of his recommendation at this time. Thank you. Ms. Williams? Uh, Dr. Connolly, I do have one question. It's something that uh, Ms. Sutton said. Have we, I know this district well enough to know that the principals have been polled at some point. Yes, ma'am. Can you, I, I, can I you tell the principals. results of that? I meet with the principals every week. And uh, I met with them last week and had them provide input into the plan. And one of the things I continue to say to the principals when I meet with them is I'm not asking for their feedback. I'm asking for their input. And I tell them input and feedback are different. Input is on the front end. Feedback is after the decision has been made. And so I ask for their input. And the majority of the principals, um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but the majority of the principals, you have it wrong, Fonte, so you speak to those yeah, stats. I have, we did it by elementary. Turn your mic on, Mr. Rock. We did it by elementary, middle, and high school, Ms. Williams. And since we're talking about elementary right now, the discussion really there was everybody was in agreement because we had to do it according to the law. When we get to the middle and the high school, I can talk about that then if you okay. want me to, or I can do it now, whatever you would rather let's, do. Let's wait. So okay. Let's stay focused on what we're... Thank you. I, I just felt like there had been some input <laughs> on on this, and um, I, again, I'm just joining the group that says thank you for the planning, and I'm in agreement with it as it stands. And Ms. Van, to your uh, question, so the board... Those numbers again. I missed those numbers. How many principals elementary was it? There. Ms. Sutton, the elementary, we had we were mandated by law to do this, so we really didn't have the poll was really for middle school and high school, which I'll share that when we get to the middle and high school part. I have a question uh, for uh, the wellness day. Um, the uh, the principals, teachers, staffs, custodians, and people like that, they need that day too. Will we, is there any thought to that? We, we keep saying uh, the wellness of the children, but I get a lot of messages from teachers and they're going through something too. 
So uh, will they get that day? Uh, that's the day that they'll be stretched out doing all of those things that they need to do. Hey, Go ahead. I was, I was the numbers for elementary. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Ms. Smith, they will have that day, but there will be some, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a work day. It's not a day off. And so they may have professional learning teams where they're planning for instruction uh, as a team uh, and things such as that. So they will not be, you know, completely free. It's a day for planning. It's not a day off. So Pete, is that everybody on the discussion? Oh, I'm finished. I'm, yeah, I'm in agreement with it. Ms. Chisholm, can I just clarify the elementary numbers? Yes. I do have those. The, um, the principals were given the option of putting whatever the date was that they felt comfortable coming back or they would choose to come back under Plan A. And of our elementary principals, 7% said they wanted to go back to Plan A on March the 12th. 12% 12 said they wanted to go back to Plan A on March the 22nd. 20% said they wanted to go back to Plan A on March the 29th. And 61% said they wanted to go back on April the 12th. So all of them were 100% was was April 12th or earlier to answer your question this week. Thank you, Ron. Right. Thank you. I knew somebody had some data somewhere. I just didn't know who it was. He is there, everyone. Yes, everybody, with, we're up to you now, Ms. Chisholm. First of all, <clears throat> I want to say that I have total confidence in Dr. Conley and the staff, and I do feel certain that all of us have the welfare of everyone, the children, the staff members, and, and uh, the parents uh, at heart and with all this planning. And some of it, we have some leeway and other ways it's mandated by the state law. So we have to do that. We had to learn to wear our seat belts. We had to learn to wear our masks. So now we have to bring our children back to school as it has been mandated by the legislature. Um, I'm in favor of this uh, motion, Pete. So at this time, we will take the official vote. We've had the motion and the discussion. Now we'll vote. Okay. Um, Ms. Musgrave? Yes to the mandate. And Ms. Sutton? Uh, yes. Okay, and Ms. Chisholm, that's unanimous. Thank you, Pete. <clears throat> Next, we will consider 3.02, approval of transition to plan A for sixth through 12th grade students. Um, Dr. Conley, would you please uh, share your recommendations? Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to start by sharing the experience that I had on yesterday with students. I was assisting uh, out at Cliffdale Elementary with training students and getting them in the carpool line. A little boy who was a kindergarten student got out of the car and he was shaking like a leaf and he was afraid. And I said, you want me to walk you to class? He said, yes, please. And before I could think about it, I took him by the hand to walk him to class, and he had a box of supplies and had his Chromebook, and he had it on a book bag that was putting him almost to the ground back. <laughs> and so I helped him walk to the, in the building and down the hallway, and he saw all these people, and then we got close to his classroom, and he looked up and he saw his teacher. And the little boy, kindergarten boy looked up at me and said, I'm all right now, I see my teacher. <laughs> that's the power of a teacher. And that's what these young people need and miss is their teacher. He was fine when he saw his teacher. Next, Madam Chair, this is in the item, speech for transition to plan A for grades 6 through 12. Senate Bill 
220 allows students in grades 6 to 12 to operate in plan A or plan B for the rest of the school year when the first school day been on or after April 1st. For students in grades 6 to 12 with IEPs or 504, LEAs must offer an option for plan A. I want to pause here because we have 7,000 students in grades 6 to 12 with IEPs and another 3,000 plus students with 504. So 10,000 of my students in grades 6 to 12 we must offer the option of plan A. We must also continue providing a remote option for parents who choose that option. The safety plan, we must submit a safety plan to the North Carolina DHHS. If secondary schools move to plan A, we must submit that plan and it will be approved. It cannot be rejected. We also must work with the ABC Collaborative, Science Collaborative, which Humberland is already doing. Part of our safety plan will allow time for staff to get the second vaccine with 4,000 of our staff, more than, have already got the vaccine. We'll make updates to the morning processes to accommodate health and safety for screening larger groups of students. We'll continue to consult with the health department, Dr. Dream, about the impact of moving middle and high school students to plan A. We'll consult with staff to address logistics, such as transportation, child nutrition services, facility needs, and overall staffing. Additionally, we have investigated the feasibility of antigen COVID-19 testing in all of our schools. I will say of the North Carolina schools that are in Plan A, K-12, secondary spread of the virus in schools is not occurring. There have been and will continue to be cases in our schools because there are cases in the community. But the research and the evidence so far is showing there is not significant spread inside the school building. And that which is occurring for the most part is adult to adult. At this time, Ms. Bolden will speak to our efforts around antigen testing. Ms. Bolden. Hi, good evening. We are, um have applied for Bimex Now COVID-19 Rapid Antigen Test. That, what that is, it's a quick diagnostic screening for students and staff who are showing our top five um, COVID-19 symptoms like shortness of breath, cough, chills, fever, or loss of taste or smell. So if those kids or staff members present with those symptoms, we can give them a quick antigen test at school and be able to eliminate uh, people who are positive and also their close contacts immediately. Uh, we applied for the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment, which is also known as the CLIA certificate on March 9th, and that certificate was issued today. The cost of the certificate to the district is $180. There are some other considerations we want to um, think about. The impact of the insurance, uh, the cost of insurance with having labs on our campuses, the amount of personnel it will take to perform the by next now COVID-19 rapid antigen test. And also want to be mindful that we will provide staff and parental consent prior to 
moving forward with any antigen test if this is approved. <clears throat> Ms. Chisholm and board members, as a lab, you know the next slide, Kevin. As allowed by session law, it is my request that the board consider all Cumberland County middle and high school students transition from Plan B to Plan A um, on Monday, April 12th, the first day after spring break. Year-round schools would also begin on April 12th following the intercession. This day will allow schools to have adequate time to adjust master schedules and balance class loads if needed and prepare to serve larger groups of students. Students will attend school four days per week beginning at April 12th. Again, Wednesday will be used for deep cleaning, flex time, for our classified staff to support training and bus safety. Principals express concerns about the volume and time for screening, along with ensuring health and safety protocols. Families that wish to remain virtual may continue this option. Time and schedules will stay the same as in the March 15th transition to Plan B. Students attending the virtual academies again will experience no change. Next slide. As you can see here, the recommended timeline for our transition to Plan A for students in grades 6 to 12 is consistent with our timeline for pre-K-5 transition to Plan A. We would have some calendar adjustments. March 31st will remain asynchronous learning for all students. Staff will report on site to assist with Plan A foul preparations. April 1st, will be revised to an asynchronous learning day for students and a required work day for staff. This adjustment again supports Plan A. No adjustments recommended for year-round school. The aforementioned calendar for pre k five transition to Plan A would also apply to raise six to 12 transition to plan A. I'll pause here for any questions. At this time, um, Dr. Connolly, we will, the chair will call for a motion and a second, and then we will have the discussion on on this. Oh, okay. Mr. I'd like to make a motion to approve transition to plan A for sixth grade through 12th grade students as presented by Dr. Connolly. I'll second that. It's been moved and properly second that we um, approve the presentation presented by Dr. Conley. Now it's time for discussion. Pete, if you'll please call the roll. Mr. Webb. I made the motion, so I obviously support it. I um, wish um, we could do it sooner, but I understand the rationale. And again, appreciate the planning on everyone's behalf. One point I do want to mention that you know, it takes three or four or five days in this case is the recommitment that the families are able to make. I think that's very uh, sensitive to allow them to uh, make new commitments for the rest of this school year. So that's you know, part of why we can't do this sooner, but I believe it's safe for all and best for the children. So I support it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. I should have asked this before, but um, have the water systems in all the schools been checked? We did not shut our water down. Uh, we're not allowing them to drink directly from the water fountain. Uh, they have to use water bottles. But our uh, maintenance staff was maintaining the system the entire time. Okay. 
And I know we discussed this before, but um, the ventilation systems. Yeah, Miss uh, Fields, I don't know if you're on, if you can speak to the ventilation system. It's not on um, yeah. yeah. Yes, here, here I am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, again, we have made several adjustments to the ventilation systems. Uh, we are bringing in as much uh, outside or fresh air as is possible, either through manual dampers or controls here centrally. Um, we also have suggested that whenever possible and in rooms where windows can be opened, if they want to crack a window, that can increase circulation. Um, we have been doing filter changes every three months. Um, we've been doing a regular uh, preventive maintenance schedule. We've actually replaced a lot of HVAC units over the last year um, since the kids have been out. Um, and we uh, are getting ready to begin the assessments with Brady um, on all of our systems for engineering recommendations on some other measures that we could possibly take to um, improve even further. And Brady is a HVAC company, outside company. Yes. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Mr. McKellar. Uh, I just have uh, one comment, and that is that uh, I'm not really against the, the recommendations per se. I just think that the timing uh, about bringing back K through 12 on the same day, the same time, I just think the timing is off. Uh, I think there needs to have been some kind of a test period using K through five. Uh, so therefore, I am uh, not in favor of the recommendation. Okay, Ms. Musgrave. I, uh, I, I have a, uh, with the cleaning, did the teachers get the proper equipment because some were complaining about having one little rag that they were supposed to clean up with and that their windows are uh, shut where they can't open them so is that uh how things are right now i let me still comply but i would tell you uh, miss Musgrave, whatever teacher told you that is not been honest with you we have provided lots of cleaning materials to the schools miss still thank you miss miss musgrave yes ma'am we have gotten a lot of supplies out to the schools. Um, supplies for replenishment are available here at the warehouse. Um, the cleaning rags can be rinsed out in a, in a sink and, and laying to dry, that's, that's fine. Um, they can use paper towels to uh, disinfect with the Oxyvir. Um, so, it, and if they need anything, uh, when they get to the school and discover that they'd like to have something else, all they need to do is contact my people here um, and we're ready to resupply as needed. So um, if they uh, they did not get an email uh, telling them uh, anything about the supplies or anything, they said from operations or somewhere like that, they got an email um, that said, how they were supposed to use that rag and you know to spray on the rag and do the wipe and, and what have you did that happen uh, we have had uh, some some conversations in the uh principals update meetings about that specifically um anytime anybody has had a question i have answered yes ma'am and that are that's the directions that we've been giving them especially um to uh, to clean electronics because that's the biggest question that we get um and we we've given direction several times uh there are some resource materials on a google drive folder that all of the principals um, and head custodians have uh, access to so throughout the year from the from august we have been sending out information and custodial services has been working very closely with the um school custodial staff it is possible miss musgrave that there's some teacher that the principal has not 
share the information with as possible. So um, I, in our meeting this week with principals, we will re-emphasize to make sure that every teacher is getting the information. So we know how that can be. We tell the principals, principals can tell the teacher. Sometimes that message may not get out. So we re-emphasize that this week. Uh, okay, um, uh, but they were saying about an, an email, but anyway, um, uh, one, um, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Sutton. My uh, yes, uh, is Ms. Bolden on? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Bolden, I have a question. Can you, uh, make clear to everyone what the CDC guidelines is for middle schools and high schools returning to in-person learning? Um, you're referencing the new recommended implementation of those mitigation strategies? I'm uh, recommending, well, the, the recommendations that I read about not having high school students every day in buildings. Okay, that information is based off the um, transmission. So yes. if if we have, for example, um, a, a transmission being orange, it says that middle and high schools and should be in hybrid learning mode or reduced attendance with physical distance of six feet or more. And if we were in yellow, um, of course, they can go full in-person instruction with physical distance of six feet or greater. And the same thing for blue. Now, if we were in the red zone, and right now I believe we're in orange, um, middle and high schools and virtual only instruction unless they can strictly implement all mitigation strategies. Mm -hmm. So that's the things that we've been putting in place and have few cases in high schools mm -hmm. that have already opened. So they will be able to remain open if they were open, um, but only if they uh, were strictly following the mitigation strategies. And right now we're in plan B with high school and middle schools, right? I believe that is correct. Plan B for high school and middle. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I want to make this very clear. I want to say this, and I want it to be very clear so people will understand again where I've been coming from this entire year. My concern has been trying to follow and do what I was supposed to do to keep myself, my family, and my community safe. Based on the CDC guidelines, based on the fact that I believe and trust Dr. Fauci and what he's asked, he's concerned about North Carolina possibly moving too fast. He said that the hardest part of a journey is getting to the end and being patient. He said, don't spike the ball on the five yard line. Don't do it. And when we talk about putting these high school kids back in the building all day together, that's just too much. I cannot support this, cannot support it. We're on a hybrid model right now. I'm more comfortable. I'm even nervous about this, but I'd be more so nervous if I knew that we had buildings filled with students and all the professionals and the doctors has asked us not to. No, I will not support it. we have to all right. Okay, Ms. Van. <laughs> All right. Um, my mind's going 100 miles an hour on, on different things. I do support this. Um, I, I think when we think about putting them all back in, and, and I understand exactly what Mr. McKellar was saying, you know, throwing them all in the same day, but then I look at we do that every year on the first day of school. And that's basically what this would be, would be the first day of school. Um, and knowing how excited uh, the, the kids have been. Again, which we've said from day one, um, we're still given a choice. We're given that choice of to remain virtual or to go back to school. Um, and so I, I think by saying that, if I think the the, high, the middle schoolers and high schools should have that chance to be in school. 
um, on plan A. That's my personal opinion. Um, I think that um, we've talked about this before as far as saying that, you know, if, if a cluster does come up, we can shut it down. It's not like we're saying we're going back to school and the school doors are going to be held open, you know, come hell or high water. If, if we can close those doors, but if we never give it a chance, we won't know. Um, and what is it if somebody said, don't want to try, um, afraid they won't get it. Susan, I think this was you. If you don't try, you for sure, you know, it's not going to happen. And I, I just, I think that we, we owe it to them as well to um, open those doors for them and let them go back the remainder of the year and, and at least make some memories. And so I do support this plan. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I think I think schools are ready. I think uh, parents and students uh, are optimistic, and uh, well, yeah, optimistic about the future and about um, school for the first time in, in a year. It seems, um, and I, I feel like the science supports uh, this recommendation, and that's why I support this recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Um, I agree. I uh, is, did you say my name? Yeah, yeah. she comes. Oh, okay. I'm Just sorry. Reading. I thought maybe I jumped in because I have a tendency to do that. Uh, I, I totally agree, Mr. Warfel, with your comments. Ron, I did want to go back to you because you've been sitting there with your data, and I know that's your, <laughs> that's your thing. So if you would just give us what the principal said, okay. I'd appreciate it. We, um, you know, Dr. Conley said they, the principals were allowed to provide uh, input, and then at the end of that meeting, we, we did a one, well, we did a survey, and the question simply read, what date do you want to shift to plan A? And it was an open response. It was not like you have these three or four choices. Um, and I'll, do, I'll separate them out so you'll see middle school, 15% uh, of the, high, the middle school principals said they wanted to return to plan A sometime in the month of March. 69% of the principals, middle school principals said they wanted to return some, uh, at spring break in April. So that's 84% of the middle school principals either wanted to return in the three weeks now before spring break or right at spring break. 8% said they wanted to return at the beginning of the school year next year. They did not want to come back to plan A this year. And 8% had no opinion. And the no opinion was whatever the group wants. But I didn't want to put that into there. I didn't want to look like we were trying to sway any votes. High school, same thing. It's open box. 20% um, said they wanted to come back in March. 60% said they wanted to come back at spring break, which is 80% of the high school principals wanted to come back between now and spring break. Uh, 20, uh, 13% said they wanted to come back in the school year 21-22. And again, 7% uh, had no opinion. Okay. Thank you, Ron. I, again, I know um, that that's been one of the things that I can always look to Dr. Conley for, and that's feedback from the people in the buildings. And, and obviously, it's overwhelming support of opening in April, which um, really makes me confirm my feelings. The other thing is, I think we need to remember also that we, we're going to have remote learners. Everybody's not going to be back in the building. And we don't know, there may be some people who decide, you know, that they, okay. they're, that, I'm sorry. I, I think Ms. Sutton has a question, but you was okay. Thinking, I'm sorry. I keep thinking I'm doing the wrong thing, Ms. Chisholm. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, you was the, so, um, and then we have the 10,000 with IEPs or 504s that are going to have to go back. Am I correct in that? Just making sure I'm not making up things as we go. You're correct. Because we, we did discuss a lot of this. I was just looking at my notes from last week, and a lot of these same exact things we, we talked about. Um, as a matter of fact, Nick, Nick talked about not being able to meet the governor's intent if we didn't go back. And what the state board had called for. So I'm in support of this. I appreciate the work that I know has been happening now since last September, or actually probably August, mm -hmm. because our first presentation was September, and then again in November. So the work has been being done. It's just that we've not solidified when. So um, I'm in favor, Dr. Conley. I have one 
statement, please. Um, Mr. Phipps, um, what did the teacher say? Uh, you gave the, the data on principals, but did anybody survey the teachers and, uh, you know, are they still excited or are they excited about going back um, full time? Ms. Musgrave, we, we did not survey the teachers, but I will tell you anecdotally, as we're out in the, the schools this week, teachers are excited. And, and I want to say this, I don't even know how it sounds. And normally I don't like to talk without no, I hit in trouble. But it's time for our children to have the opportunity to be back in the classroom. And the teachers have been teaching remotely the entire year. And if they apply for accommodations, we'll consider that. But we're at a point where children are suffering. And it's time to get them back in the building and the teachers have to teach in the building. Thank you, Dr. Connelly. Um, Pete, you had called on me? Yes, ma'am. I say again that, that I really uh, am proud of uh, Dr. Connelly and the staff and all the hard work that they've done. And this has been um, a trying time for everybody, for the children, for the parents, for us. And no, uh, but it, it is time that we do bring our kids back to school. There are some instances where because of the um, conversation that some citizens and parents had with the legislators, they have said that it is mandated that we have to go back into the classrooms. And since uh, Dr. Connie, I missed it. How many employees did you say have been vaccinated? Ms. Bowden is about 4,000 uh, employees vaccinated. And, and that's just through Cape Valley Health System. I don't have the numbers available through the health department, but through Cape Valley Health System, 4,000. So, Ms. Sidney, we've been seeing more than 4,000. Okay. Some have gotten their vaccine in other counties. Some right. have gotten it from their doctor in other places that we don't know about. So it's more than 4,000. And this was the 4,000 from, she said, Cape Fear Valley? Cape Fear Valley. The okay. special event that we had was 4,000 employees, plus all the other ones who got their vaccine somewhere else. How many employees do we have again? We have, um, we have, um, Ruben, you mean the number, we have 8,000, 8, including the part time, the contractors, and everybody. But 6,500 uh, full time employees. Ruben, correct my numbers. No, no, you're, you're correct, sir. So um, the 6,500 uh, makes up our, our day to day workforce, and then um, over 8,000. And we also, when, um, when we provided the opportunity for vaccinations, we also did that for our substitutes as well as part of our uh, employee force. So every employee, full time, part time, Every substitute, every contractor, everyone that volunteers, such as you all, the board members, everyone that will touch any of our buildings has had the opportunity to get vaccinated if they chose. That's disheartening. Oh, yeah, and, some, and the bus drivers have too. Bus oh, okay. drivers, custodians, cafeteria, everyone has had the opportunity to get vaccinated. Pete, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of the motion because I do not believe that uh, Dr. Conley and the staff would put any uh, of our employees in a dangerous place and that they have done all the things that, um, that were necessary to keep all of them safe. So I am in favor of the motion. And Madam Chair, if I might say to your point, and someone else's earlier point, maybe Ms. Vann, if any point we have a cluster or spread in a classroom, I'm prepared to shut it 
not that close it, but shut it down for the proper quarantine period. If it's a hallway, if it's a classroom, a building, or the entire system, we're prepared to do that if we have to. We hope we don't, if everybody will follow the three W's and do what they're supposed to do. Okay, we will now take the vote. Okay. Ms. Musgrave? Not in support. Ms. Sutton? No. Okay, and Ms. Chisholm, um, Ms. Jones and Mr. McKellar did not vote in favor. And um, Right, see my numbers here. And, and the other, Ms. Chisholm, Ms. Williams, Ms. Vann, Mr. Warfel, and Mr. West voted in favor. So it's five, five, five for and yes, four against. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Wow. And uh, as the chair, I declare this meeting adjourned. Okay. <laughs>